So, so we are going to start with, uh, with the first presentations. Okay. Uh, Welcome. Uh, I think that you can see my uh, my my screen. Uh, welcome to the to the uh, durable uh, durable forums. Okay, uh, this is an action that is in the framework of an indirect project. It's called Durable, uh, and we try to improve the the competitiveness of the of the C and also the and the rest of the company in the in the in the Atlantic area using robotics and aerospace technologies. Uh, to improve the, the, their operation, the maintenance and operations, okay? Uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Celia de los Santos. I am the head of aerospace and production in, in the aerospace and the, in the technological corporation of Andalusia. Uh, uh, of course, we are available to support you in an, uh, uh, during this meeting in any question that you could have. Please write it in the, in, the, in the chat and I will, of course, support you in all the questions that you have. Of, of course, feel free to share everything in social media. Okay, this is my contact. And some recommendations to start these presentations. Okay, uh, uh, as I have been saying, I have been talking and told you. Uh, of course, we are open to to. We need your your interactions. So please feel free to to ask whatever you want during uh, me using the chat. But of course, the the real the real action that we would like to have with you is to to have the the bit meetings because with this action we are looking for uh picking up your your needs uh, your your inputs from from your needs and also to check if the technologies that we are developing in this consortium are really useful for you okay so please request all the b2b meetings using the the big match tool and uh, our website is uh, the one that is also in the screen. Um, as I have said at the beginning, maybe you you wouldn't you wouldn't have uh, joined us at the at the very beginning. This presentation has been recorded, okay. And of course, feel free to to request whatever you want. Okay. Uh, the presentations that we are going to have today, uh, there are eight presentations from eight technology providers that are in the consortium: Alerion, University of Seville, Padacatec. University of Bristol, Instituto, Instituto Superior Politécnico of Lisboa, Lortec, Dublin City University, and STIA. Uh, uh, the, all of them are going to present these technologies. And also in the website of the event, there is a, there is a sheet that is, I will show at the end of the, of the presentations, uh, where you can find this technology and a, the direct link to, to, the, to the weekly meetings with the, with the people involved in this technology. Okay? So thank you so much for, for attending this webinar. And we are going to start with the first presentation of Alerion. Alerion, Yvonne Diaz, please. Yvonne is, uh, uh, is the, the person that's going to present and introduce the technology that, that Alerion is developing. Yvonne, please. Uh, hello, everyone. Can you see my screen? Thank you. Can you see my screen? Yes. I can see. Yeah, good. Okay, I will. So good morning, everyone. Unfortunately, I don't speak French, so I will do it in English. Uh, my name is Yvonne, as I said, as she said. I'm engineer at Alerion, and for over five years, I have been working in the aerospace industry as software and system engineer. Uh, Alerion was born in 2014 in Munich and incubated at European Space Agency and Business Incubation Center through the Technology Transfer Program. Since 2016, Alerion has been offering custom automated industrial uh, inspection solutions for different infrastructures using our cutting edge technology that permits high precision navigation up close to structures. Uh, our dynamic team comprises engineers with research and industry experience in developing high-performance computational software, in machine learning-based computer vision, and in designing drones for extreme environments. Um, in Alerion, we have three main lines of work, intelligent drones, embedded edge computing, and custom UAV uh, design. Our intelligent drones can perform totally autonomous and automated inspections thanks to our relative up-close navigation, which can be used to inspect complex multi-structures. 
for example, uh, flu free blade wind turbines, bridges, pillars, dams, or other structures. Uh, we use embedded high performance per edge computing to analyze all data recollected on the drone during the inspections and create in situ reports. We perform real time data analysis based on our artificial intelligence uh, based algorithms. And last but not least, our drone design. We build drone from extreme environments with unparalleled stability and in high winds and designed to fly between one hour or 45 minutes. Now, I will introduce you our last developments for operation and maintenance. Uh, the first technology I'm going to present you is our autonomous up close relative navigation. In, in the video, we will see how our drone flies around the wind turbine, performing on one blade inspection, going through the four sides of the blade, as well as how our navigation allows the drone to be always a constant constant distance and perpendicular to the blade, as you can see in the video. Also, you can see the high quality images that we can take during the flight. We can perform flip blade inspections in one flight. This means we can fly through all the wind turbine uh, and recollect all the data at once, considering that the drone determines which blade is inspecting, which side of the blade and the distance to the blade. All this technology is already on the market. Um, we perform multiple inspections with our drones all around the world. And we will continue doing soon, as soon as possible. Uh, our next expansions will be in Spain, in Zaragoza and Zamora, in Denmark, Netherlands, in the Baltic Sea or in the United States, and uh, Colorado, precisely. We perform totally automated and repeatable high precision and quality inspections. This allows us to improve the planning and minimizes the personal risk, costs, and time. Uh, to support ground personnel like operators and pilots, we have an application that allows us to have direct connection with the drone, and we can check in real time the images that are taken uh, and the status of the drone, like distance to the blade, the blade part is being inspected, GPS positioning, drone battery, and many other useful data for operator or the, and the pilot. Once the flight is over, we can recollect all this data and analyze it in situ to verify the performance of the drone with our own applications. Uh, one of the potential applications of this technology is the implementation of a robotic arm to perform contact inspections on inter of internal structural defects in the blades with an ultrasonic or LPS sensor. Uh, for example, one of our analysis tools is the flight analysis tool. Uh, this application shows how the drone perform in, for example, in this, in, in this uh, graph, we can see in red the actual position of the drone during the flight and in blue the waypoint or the uh, that we had sent to perform it. Uh, the second technology I'm going to show you is a real-time damage detector. Here you can see a small demo uh, about our damage detection, but it actually runs while the inspection is being made. We use artificial intelligence algorithms to detect different kinds of damages like code judgment, erosion, uh, or even dirtiness, like you can see here. So after landing, a damage report is created with all the damages and their context, like exit position in the blade, damage type, uh, date, blade side, and so on. This report is created inside the drone and it's accessible within our flight application. This really saves time because there is no need of sending these images to the cloud. You don't need even internet. You can see the damages after the inspection is made just right away. Uh, like this, we are able to provide end-to-end -end solutions to our colleagues and we can go beyond that and offer blade condition assessments and repair recommendations. 
Um, so that was all. Uh, thank you for your time. And if you are interested or you have any questions, don't hesitate in requesting a video meeting or contact us uh, with the application. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Yvonne, for your interesting presentation. And uh, we go now with the second presentation that comes from the University of Seville. Um, Angel Rodriguez Castaño, please, Angel, can you can you share your presentation? Angel, can you hear us? I don't know if Angel is here, but I think that maybe he has he has any problem. Maybe the microphone. Okay, Angel has has a problem with the uh, with the with the with the with the connection, and uh, we are going to try to 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 recover him. So we go ahead with the with Irene Eras. Irene is from the from the Aerospace Technology Center from Fladecatec. Please, Irene, are you ready? Uh, hello. Good morning. Thank you so Thank much, you. Irene. Bonjour. Uh, okay, can you see now my screen? Uh, yes, but I can. Okay, but I cannot see your presentation now. Right no. now. No, okay. it's okay. Perfect. Okay, it's okay. So, so if you go, if you want to speak in French, of course, feel free to do it. Thank okay. You so Bonjour, uh, je m'appelle Irene Ras, je suis chercheur senior à Falakatec et je vais vous présenter à l'Advanced Center for Aerospace Technologies. But I prefer to continue in English with the presentation. Catec <laughs> uh, is a research center and place close to Seville in Spain and is managed and controlled by the Andalusian Foundation for Aerospace and Development, FARA. The main goal of Falacatec is the research and development of aerospace related technologies. But also, Catec has the objective to be a key tool in the generation and management of the aerospace scientific knowledge in coordination with companies interested, universities, and other research organizations. Uh, the three main research areas where Catec develops technology for the aerospace sector are the avionics and systems, materials and processes, and robotics and automation. Although CATEC is divided in these three different departments, they have connection between them, holding continuous meetings in order to keep up to date and use the synergies between the departments. Regarding the objective of this webinar, FADA CATEC has a large experience in development uh, of technological solutions for unmanned aerial vehicles, as well as experience in materials inspection with non-destructive tests. Currently, we are developing uh, the technologies from aerospace to adapt in the operational maintenance in renewable plants, mainly in wind farms, concentrated solar power plants, and photovoltaic, photovoltaic plants. Uh, okay, we have divided our experience in three main lines of work, all related with autonomous inspection over UAV's vehicles, but with different NDT techniques. As you can see there, uh, we have visual inspection without contact, inspection and with contact. Below I will detail <clears throat> each one of the technologies. <clears throat> In first place, a visual inspection with UAVs. Our technology allows improving navigation capabilities for the autonomous operation by algorithms, develop and simulate validation. The autonomous navigation fun functionalities include detection of obstacles, tracking of mobile objects, 3D mappings, and accurate geolocalization and precise navigation. These real-time strategies with low computation time joined with adaptation to 3D environment is one of the main differences with respect to ground robots. And the main benefits include the possibility to analyze large areas of power plants in short time, with a digital register possible to compare with previous situation. The second line of activity is related to the inspection of the drones without contact with the infrared thermography. We are working uh, with infrared thermography inspection and we have started in wind blades, as you can see in the video, uh, where we can detect structural information. 
previous test so that we can detect scratches, delaminations, or impacts in the wind blades. In this line, we also have a start with the infrared thermography in concentrated solar power plants. In this kind of plants, it's possible to detect vacuum losses in the heat collector elements, liquids, or spots in the piper or insulation loss in the salt tanks, as you can see here. We will continue with the study in PV plants by a combination of different inspection types, first with uh, electroluminescence done by SWIR cameras, uh, illuminated and black thermography with infrared thermography, and visual inspection, all these three techniques combined in the drone. And the three line of inspection is with contact. Catec, in collaboration with the University of Seville and the Instituto Superior North in Lisboa, have developed the first drone able to perform contact inspection in industrial environments. This platform can be adapted to different capabilities. We have, as you can see in the video, you can we have coupled a robotic arm in our UAV to allow an inspection with contact when it's required. And therefore, we have been testing uh, a decarrier inspection to take failures in metallic components. And now we are adapting the ultrasonic sensor for more accurate inspection in composite components made of a material such as uh, the wind blades. So, uh, merci for votre attention. Uh, if you are interested in further information, please don't hesitate to reserve a B2B meeting by the, this application, the webinar, or directly you can contact us by the mails you can see in the screen. Thanks. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Irene, for your presentation. Quite interesting also. Uh, and now, can you close your microphones, okay? Because I feel that I hear someone from anywhere. Okay, that's great. Thank you so much. And now we can go. I don't know if uh, I think that um, that Angel is still having problem with their connection. So we are going with the with this next presentation that is University of of, of uh, West of England in Bristol. Uh, Jonas Jonas Nilov, please can you join us? Can you share your screen? Yep. Hello. Hi everyone. Thank you so much, Jonas. Uh, right. Right, uh, can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Thank you so much. Excellent. Right, uh, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Jonas Nilov. I will be presenting the technology offer from the University of the West of England in Bristol. Um, our technology offer is custom UAV design and manufacturing. Um, uh, first, I would like to say a few words about uh, our organization, the university, and our world, our durable team. The university is a public research university in the city of Bristol in the United Kingdom. Um, there are around 30,000 students, um, about 7,000 postgraduate and research students, um, and multiple campuses. Uh, the university's particular research strengths include engineering and computer science. The durable work is based mainly on French Air Campus uh, in the Department of Engineering, Design and Mathematics. Uh, and also it, the durable work will take place in the Bristol Robotics Laboratory. The uh, Bristol Robotics Laboratory is situated uh, on French Air Campus. Uh, the laboratory is the leading and largest academic centre for robotics research in the UK. Uh, it is also one of the largest robotics laboratories, if not the largest, in Europe. The laboratory is a collaboration between the University of the West of England, Bristol, and the University of Bristol. Um, the Bristol Robotics Laboratory is home to a community of academics and businesses as well as a dedicated indoor drone flying arena. Research in the laboratory involves robotics, uh, unmanned aerial vehicles, unmanned ground vehicles, machine learning, 
assisted living, soft robotics, and many other fields. Uh, the laboratory also houses vast incubator space for up to 70 high-tech startup companies and early stage companies. Uh, right. um, we can build custom multi-rotor UAVs for a wide variety of payloads and sensors developed by either durable partners or other organizations. The aircraft we have expertise with range from very small to much larger aircraft. For example, the drone in the top picture is a very small and agile aircraft <clears throat> with flight times of about five minutes. The drone in the bottom picture is uh, much larger and a much slower vehicle capable of around uh, three hours of flight time. So the aircraft performance uh, can significantly vary. The aircraft payloads can include robotic arms, onboard computers, standard cameras, thermal cameras, radio frequency transmitters, or really any other system. The total payload mass while maintaining a flight endurance of at least 30 minutes can vary from around 100 grams to 10 kilograms. Uh, this is while keeping costs very low and the total aircraft mass within 20 kilo. If flight times of less than 30 minutes are okay, then payloads heavier than 10 kilo can be flown. Or if the mass can, or if the total mass can go over 20 kilograms. With payloads lighter than 10 kilo, uh, realistically, flight endurance can be between 30 and 60 minutes. If the payload is uh, especially lightweight, then flight times can reach about 90 minutes in real world scenarios. We can modify the aircraft and its systems so that it can be operated automatically in a wide variety of environments without sacrificing aircraft stability. Uh, for instance, as part of the durable project, our university team is developing a hot environment drone battery system. This would enable high endurance drone operation in, for instance, 40 degree Celsius environments, such as in South of Spain or in Portugal, without damaging the batteries due to overheating. In the durable project, the main application we see for these custom drones is for aerial inspection. We believe that these drone systems could be applied to either small scale or large scale automated visual and thermal inspection of photovoltaic solar panels. Um, also because the aircraft um, mass can be can vary a lot. Uh, multiple camera systems or computer systems can be flown on one aircraft. Another application would be to fly any of the payloads developed by other durable project, project partners. We specifically created a modular aircraft design that allows us to tremendously vary the payload mass so that we can better accommodate our durable partners. Uh, basically, by swapping out some components and then changing some software settings, the aircraft mass can go from 4 kilo to 20 kilo and then back to 4 kilo very quickly. We want to enable um, any of our partners to test their equipment as quickly as possible and with as little modifications to their equipment as possible. So if the uh, test equipment is an early prototype that is still quite heavy, hasn't been lightened, then that may well be okay. Um, thirdly, the drone can be equipped to carry significant computer and radio equipment on board so that your collected data is automatically processed during the flight. So even if uh, the data you collect is very intense, uh, then we can technically just add another radar transmitter and the extra weight from that and the extra electrical power requirement would probably not be a problem. Uh, the main benefit uh, we see as being the development of relatively low cost, high performance, stable airborne platforms. Uh, the aircraft uh, can be adapted for your specific payload mission and environmental conditions. Uh, we can also work to adapt the aircraft system to fit within a particular EU drone legislation category. Um, 
especially because the new European Union drone rules are highly set on weight. So we can see how to uh, minimize aircraft weight while giving you as much payload performance as possible. Um, and finally, uh, we can implement systems engineering methods to provide evidence of the reliability of an aircraft system, such as an autopilot system, if need be. If you believe that um, the technology solutions from the university can be of benefit to you, please feel free to book a meeting. Um, for meeting bookings, please contact me. For any other inquiries, please feel free to contact uh, Dr. Matthew Studley, uh, Dr. Steve Wright, or me. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Jonas, for your presentation. Uh, very good and interested. And I feel uh, we're still having a problem with the University of Seville. So now we go to the, with the, uni, with the uh, Instituto Superior Tecnico from Lisboa. Uh, Alberto Valle, please. Are you going? Uh, bonjour, Sylvia. Uh, bonjour. 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 Uh, vous parlez mon pantalon? Une minute. Okay. Uh, Please, wait a minute. Please, Jonas, don't forget to close your microphone. Perfect. We can see okay. your presentation, Alberto. Perfect. Oops. Euh, bonjour, euh, merci pour attendre la, ma pr présentation. Je m'appelle Alberto Val, mais je vais quand même cambier pour uh, anglais. OK, so, um, I'm representing here at IST. IST is the largest engineering school in Portugal with a several undergr undergraduate, master and PhD program. IST is spread in Lisbon by three campus. We have more than 11,000 of students. Some of them are PhD and more than 20% are international and almost 900 professors and researchers. IST also accommodates uh, several research and development units, units where two of them are participated in particular in this project. Uh, the the um, research and development units are uh, ISR, Institutes of Systems and Robotics, represented by Professor Peter Lima, and also IPFM, uh, Institute of Plasmas and Nuclear Fusion, represented by, by me. Uh, besides the, the durable project, IST also participates in several national, European, and international uh, research and development projects in the area of robotics. So, which are the main li lines of work, in particular, in the durable project? We have three. Uh, uh, one is the inspection with autonomous mobile robots, uh, ground robots, usually called UGVs. Uh, guidance, navigation, and control technologies of robots, and finally, uh, 3D reconstruction. So, which are the technologies that then you can provide? Uh, we have uh, autonomous UGV inspection without contact. Uh, it means that UGV is able to transport equipment uh, such as cameras, depth, cam uh, depth, cam depth sensors, sonars, or other technologies that then can perform inspection for instance. Of solar panels. Uh, which are the benefits special that we, pr we provide the ability to perform remote inspection manipulation. Uh, we can inspect the solar panels uh, operation not only during the day but special during the shutdown at the night and without operators in the field. Uh, we provide the ability to manage logistics to optimize planet trajectories and sequence of operations and special the ability to coordinate not a single UGV, but also multiple UGVs or UGVs plus UAVs in collaboration. A similar technology is the autonomous UGV inspection, but with contact. Similar like to the previous one, the UGV is able to transport uh, technologies uh, such as um, such as the uh, tools to perform uh, inspection or even maintenance uh, uh, operations in, with solar panels. Um, the benefits are we perform micro inspection of the photovoltaic plates to detect cracks, bowls, and dirt, uh, or even clean. 
uh, ability to to once again to use not only one UGV but multiple UGVs and equipped with manipulators at the same time. The other technology is related to guidance, navigation, and control. It means uh, we can perform localization in real time, not only on the, the close to the solar panel, but also in the, in, in the entire farm. We can perform path planning. It means to identify which is the best trajectories uh, in the field. And finally, to follow the path that was planned before, including obstacle detection and avoidance. It works not only on solar far farms, but it can uh, perform uh, GE, uh, guidance, navigation, and control also in the wind farms to provide support to the drones, as you see later. And the benefits are similar like the previous one with additional. So uh, with additional features, special for security and surveillance with obstacle detection and avoidance. We can plan and schedule automatic operations in the farm. Uh, for instance, not only to inspect uh, uh, one solar panel or multiple solar panels or the entire farm, and once again, to perform also support to the drones in the entire uh, uh, farm, and uh, also to the logistic management like the previous technology. Ground mobile support, as I said uh, before, uh, the UGV can perform support for UAVs, uh, not only in solar panels, but mainly for uh, wind farms. Why? Because you, UGV can perform a support to the AV as, like, as a mobile charging station. Also a communication support like a, a mobile repeater or even as a mobile landing platform. Which are the potential applications? Uh, with these uh, technologies, we can keep the UAVs in continued operation of inspection and maintenance of solar and wind farms for a long period and, and mitigate the risk of dropping uh, packets of communication and lost communication with UAVs. Finally, the last technology that we provide is 3D reconstruction, is a, a mapping of the scenario, uh, is a 3D reconstruction of the scenario, like a, a combination of virtual reality and augmented reality, which are the potential applications. Uh, we have several ones. That, so we have a representation of the environment. And with this representation, we can plan practice of operations, but we can also track the status of the fleet of UAVs and UGVs, and uh, also useful for maintenance operators and pilots, which are benefits. Once again, logistic management to, op to optimize the planned trajectories and sequence of operations. We can perform characterization of the, in the environment, special for monitoring vegetation or possible shells appearing on solar panels, and so on. Uh, and uh, they're easily to track all the operation in real time and to get a report in real time or at, at the end of the operations. Well, uh, thank again for attending this presentation. Uh, I invite you to schedule a B2B meeting. Uh, if you go to the web page, please feel free and merci. Okay. Yeah, yes. Thank you so much for your presentation, uh, Alberto. Thank you so much. And now uh, we have uh, the presentation of the Dublin City University. Uh, sorry, pardon. Sorry. Uh, so from Lortec. Lexuri Basket, please. Lexuri, are you ready? Yes. Thank you, Silvia. Lexuri and Pedro Lopez are going to present, to present the technologies that develops uh, uh, Lortec. Lexuri, can you share can you share your screen? Mm, just a moment. I don't know why. Yes, now we can see. Now we can see your, your screen. Okay, that's great. Thank you so much. Yes, okay, okay yes. thank you. Hello everyone. My name is Lexuri Vasquez and I work as a researcher in Lortec. 
I will show you three additive manufacturing technologies oriented to maintenance. And after me, my colleague Pablo will explain the technologies that we use for inspection. Lortec is a non profit private technological center highly specialized in advanced manufacturing and smart factories, especially in joining technologies, additive manufacturing, and industry 4.0 technologies, including non destructive testing te techniques applied to metallic materials. And our goal is to generate and transfer excellent knowledge based on the state-of-the-art technologies to multi-sectoral industrial network in order to improve their competitiveness. Here I remark three areas where we work and that are applicable to durable a project in order to improve maintenance and operation tasks in the energy sector. So the first one uh, are the joining technologies. We have uh, different power sources like laser and electric arc and different other different uh, welding technologies like friction, resistance spot and flux. All of them are applied to a wide extension of metallic materials. In the second line, we, we have also additive manufacturing technologies. Some of them are based in powder bed fusion and other ones in directed energy deposition. With these technologies, we can manufacture and repair parts uh, from CAD files, obtaining high complexity geometries or large dimensions with minimum waste of material and short lead times. Finally, also, the, the last area that we want to remark is the inspection by non-destructive testing. We have active thermography based on induction and optical excitation experience. Also, we have passive thermography, normally used for process monitoring. And all of them also can be applied for the detection of defects in metallic and non-metallic components. So I'm going to introduce you uh, one of the first, well, the first technology of additive manufacturing, which is called SLM or selective laser melting. In this case, this technology is based on powder bed fusion. So we need a pow metallic powder as feedstock and laser as power source in order to manufacture highly complex and detailed parts. We just need the CAD file with the design of the part and the material in order to obtain that part in a short lead time and with very high accuracy. The potential application in the energy sector is for maintenance operations like manufacturing of broken parts on demand for its substitution, avoiding long stoppages. And the main benefits that we can highlight from this technology is that we can manufacture new parts in a short lead time. We also have the possibility of redesigning these parts in order to obtain a weight saving and maintaining the, the um, We can also uh, obtain with this uh, redesign possibility to avoid part, numerous part assembly. We also, um, can obtain maximum material saving. We don't need big spaces for stock in order to, to have a part waiting when for any substitution when some parts are broken. And there is no need of large production in order to be cost effective. The second technology of additive manufacturing is called LMD or laser metal deposition. In this case, uh, this technology is based on directed energy deposition. We also need metallic powder as feedstock and laser as power source. And in this case, apart from manufacturing, we can repair complex and high value added parts. Again, we need the CAD file with the design of the part or the add-on and the material. So the potential application of this technology 
is the reparation of complex and detailed high value added parts that have been broken or worn and also avoiding long stoppages. We also can uh, do or perform protective coatings with um, resistant materials in their surface in order to extend their life. So the main benefit that this technology can offer us is the reparation of broken parts in a short lead time uh, to extend the life of these parts with these reparations. The reparations are of high quality. Uh, we also have maximum material uh, savings. And again, we don't need to have big stocks of parts as we can repair with this technology, the broken parts. The last technology of additive manufacturing is called WAM, wire and arc additive manufacturing. In this case, it's again a directed energy deposition technology, but uh, in this case, the material feedstock is metallic wire, and as power source, we use electric arc. So in this case, uh, this is oriented for manufacturing and repairing parts, but in this case, for large dimension parts. Again, we need the cut file with the design or the add-on and the material. So the main potential uh, application is the fabrication and reparation of broken large parts, avoiding long stoppages. And the main benefit is, uh, in this case, even manufacture or reparation of these uh, broken parts in a short lead time to extend the life of these parts, the maximum material savings, in this case, as it, uh, it's oriented to big parts, uh, we just implement the material where we want and the, the savings on materials is very, very high. We have also the possibilities to the possibility to avoid numerous part assemblies. We don't need big uh, stocks of, of parts that are normally broken. And we don't need large production in order to be cost effective. So with this, we finish the additive manufacturing technologies. And my colleague Pablo will explain the ones that we use for inspection. Okay, I will share my screen. Oh. Okay, good morning. My name is Pablo Lopez Duralde and I work as a researcher in the control and evaluation area of Ortec. I work in the field of non-destructive testing, testing, mainly using thermography. Today I will focus on active thermography. <clears throat> what, different, what differentiates this technique from the passive one is that an excitation source is needed to generate a thermal gradient in the sample. In this way, and thanks to a thermal camera, we can record the behavior of the material before and after this excitation with the, with the aim of detecting surface or subsurface defects that can alter the normal behavior of the, of the material. At Nortec, we have three types of excitation available, laser, uh, lamps, and induction. I will summarize them very briefly. I will, I will be able to go deeper into private meetings if, if anyone is interested. Generally, laser excitation has been used in samples where it's possible to sweep with the laser and follow its path with the camera. In this way, if there is any surface crack in the material, uh, it will cause a barrier effect in the heat diffusion that will generate areas with an abnormal thermal gradient. For composite materials, we generally use a flash lamp, flash lamps or halogen lamps. With a, with a flash lamp, a high energy pulse is provided to the sample and cooling is recorded for an specified time, depending on the defect and the material. After that, different processes can be applied to the recording, such as the Fourier transform, with which we manage to go from the time domain to the frequency domain. And with this, with these phase images, defects can, be, defects can be detected, such as the laminations, for example. And depending on the frequencies at which it is detected, and after a detailed study, we can even define the sizes and depths of those defects. Halogen lamps are used in a similar way, but the excitation times are somewhat longer, or even, or even pulse trains uh, can be generated. This is known as uh, locking technique. Finally, for metallic materials, we have uh, we use uh, induction thermography. 
So this technique, uh, an alternating current is passed through a wiring close to the sample to be inspected. This current generates a magnetic field, which in turn causes induced currents in the material, which are the key to detecting defects. If there is a crack on the surface of the sample, depending on its orientation with respect to the currents, it will cause a deviation of the same. If the crack and currents are perpendicular or form an angle other than zero degrees. This deviation will cause there to be areas with a greater concentration of currents <clears throat> and therefore generate different types of heating and cooling. The information is collected with the camera and is then processed with using proprietary software in order to obtain an image where defects, uh, as for example, cracks generally, are identified. Hey, apart from thermography to detect defects in solar panels, there is another technique called electroluminescence. Uh, usually solar panels convert solar energy into electricity. However, they also have the characteristic of being able to emit light if they are connected to an electric current. By inducing an electric current on the cell, it emits light in an spectrum center at 1,150 nanometers. The more radiation it emits, the more efficient it is, and the radiation is emitted throughout the cell, so that if there is a crack or a deficiency in, in any conductive layer, it is reflected in the image captured with cameras, uh, especially sensitive to this wavelength. This was the summary of the different technologies that, that we have at Lortex in terms of non-destructive testing, using thermography and electroluminescence. Uh, if anyone is interested in requesting a meeting to go deeper into uh, into the into the techniques that Leslie has explained, or, or, or me myself, these are our emails. Our emails, so you can use the the web that for the webinar. Thank you for, okay. very much for your attention. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Pablo Lexery, for your presentation. Very interested also. And now we have Ricova, we have good news. We have Ricova at uh, the University of Seville, and Angel Rodriguez Castaño is going to, to present uh, that technology that they, they develop. Angel, please. Hi, good morning. Uh, can you share your screen, please? Yeah. Okay, can you put full screen? Thank you. Just a minute, um, one minute, yeah. Okay, <laughs> so... We cannot see your, 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 full scale, your full presentation. Can you try again? Yeah, let me check again, but I don't know why. It's, it is in full size in my computer. But it's not here. I don't know what is happening. Uh, but I think that we can see it. Okay, so try to stop. Try to let share me, again. Let me check again. We know, we know that you're having quite important connection. Now it's right. Now it's working. It's, okay. It's okay. Now it's working. Yes. Yes. Perfect. Okay. So good morning, everybody. My name is Angel Rodriguez. I'm uh, uh, professor of, at the University of Seville in the Systems Engineering and Automotion Department. And well, I'm also a researcher in the Robotics Vision and Control uh, Group. We are a large group with more than uh, 70 people, including uh, 13 professors and more than 10 postdocs and uh, uh, several researchers and engineers. Okay. Our key expertise is in uh, aerial robotics and in unmanned uh, aerial systems. And we are mainly focused in what we call uh, aerial manipulation. Okay. In our case, we, uh, we do not only perform uh, basic research, but also we are very focused in the transfer of our research work and our technology to companies. And uh, so we have contract and uh, to apply our techniques to to several use cases from uh, small companies to large companies like uh, Airbus, for example. Uh, in the last five years, here you have some uh, figures. In the last five years, we have uh, done more than 55 uh, research projects. Most of them uh, come from the European Commission. Our, uh, our main funding comes from the European Commis Commission, and we have also some other funding from the Spanish and regional programs in uh, here in uh, in the south of Spain, okay? What we are presenting here is uh, our three uh, main lines of work, our three key technologies. In practice, we are going to 
to get into some details in the in the first uh, in, the, in the in the two the first uh, techniques in the what we call intelligent navigation and in the area robotic manipulation. We also have uh, some uh, technology related to cooperation of multiple aerial systems. That means that uh, not only f uh, high level planning for for several uh, use cases. For example, we have uh, we have uh, recently finished a European project called Multi Drone, in which we have applied uh, these techniques for the media production. In that project idea is to to do uh, uh, to. Uh, to transmit a sport, uh, a sport competition, typically a, a bike racing or uh, some ships competition, and the uh, the director gives some uh, high level uh, um, uh, high level instructions on how the images should be produced, and we uh, fully plan the uh, trajectory and the coordination and cooperation of the UAVs, and also the integration of the UAVs in the in the last functionalities that had been uh, discussed uh, for the integration in the airspace, that means the what it is called the U space and the UDM. In this case, for the for this uh, for the use cases more related to this industry, uh, we are presenting the intelligent navigation and the aerial robotic manipulation. What we call an uh, intelligent navigation is the capability to uh, navigate uh, safely. Uh, a UAV in an environment in which we can have GPS, we can have uh, no GPS, or this uh, GNSS signal can be degraded. We integrate later vision and, uh, and other sensors to provide an integrated localization. Uh, it doesn't matter the uh, scenario in which we are performing uh, the flights, okay? As you will see in the, in the video, here, for example, we can fly our drones inside. Uh, just a minute. In this case, we are flying inside a sewer pipe. This is a mock-up of a sewer pipe. Uh, it is uh, the size of this uh, tunnel is uh, two meters of diameter, and we can fly inside it uh, quite safely and without no GPS uh, at all. In the following video here, we are flying in a cement oven in the south of Spain. In this case, the, sometimes we have the occlusion of the GPS signals. We have also uh, some uh, disturbances related to all the metallic parts of this, of this kind of facility. So we mainly use uh, SLAM techniques, simultaneous localization and mapping to navigate uh, safely in this in this kind of of environment also we can apply this intelligent navigator navigation system to flight in uh, environments like this one here let me show you in here we are putting a drone in the below the deck of a bridge and this is an application to measure the deflection of the of the bridge uh, deck okay so this is what we are uh, we have also tested this kind of solution to navigate inside uh, a parking lot without no gps so this is the kind of technology that we think that can be quite useful for this uh, for this industry and also we are uh, we have uh, we have a key expertise in uh, what we call a uh, aerial manipulator design and development in this case, we want to uh, when we want to work uh, touching something in, uh, for example, in a pipe, in a wall, or in any other place, we need contact between the drone and uh, and some uh, other uh, device to perform a task. We can design several kind of manipulators to be attached to the drone. We can plug them uh, attached to the to the airframe. We can use a a uh, long pole to increase the distance between the blades and the uh, contact point of the arms. Uh, we have designed uh, several kind of, of these manipulators, including compliant joints and non-compliant joints. So we developed the full platform with the manipulators and also with the con with an integrated control and planning of the UAB movement and the uh, 
movement of the of the arms okay and okay that's all um, thank you very much and if you need any detail or you have any question you just have to contact me to in the b2b meetings or in the emails okay thank you very much thank you very much angel for your presentation really really interesting and and now we are going with the with the universities uh, with the dublin city university alexio deliberto please are you ready for your presentations yeah, yeah good morning good morning thank you can you see the presentation Hello. Yes. Can you see the presentation? Yes. Can Can you put it in full screen? Yes, we can yep. see. All right. All right. So, dear old, my name is Alessio Diliberto from DCU Dublin City University, and this presentation is about the radio emission spectroscopy technique for wind turbine system. Um, for this task, uh, the team. Uh, the team in this year is formed by Professor Patrick Benelli. Uh, he is a world leader in the field of advanced X-ray diffraction imaging technology and, and the NNDT, so non-destructive radio frequency metrology for plasma processing using uh, as well the radio emission spectroscopy technique and copper aldehyde materials. And me, Alessio Di Liberto, I'm a radio frequency and micro design engineer with around 50 years of international experience in military defense system, aerospace, RFID identification and tracking devices, and IoT Internet of Things. Um, so for main lines of work for this task, uh, the main lines of, of work of this for this task are divided into three main uh, milestones, the phase alpha, the phase beta and the phase gamma. So the phase alpha the phase alpha sorry, uh, is the current phase and it is about the data collection of radio frequency emissions in the frequency range in between 1 kilohertz and 2 gigahertz. And uh, currently is using a COT, so hot off of the shelf devices. Uh, in this case, is modifying software defer radio. The phase beta is the, that is the second phase is about design of experiment. That means that it will be an optimized uh, designed based on the uh, data collection for the previous phase. So that will imply uh, dedicated hardware and uh, firmware in order to develop the first kind of prototype for demonstration. And so uh, as well for the both hardware and software optimization. And uh, the phase gamma, the third and last phase, will be the reason the first prototype concept, concept of proof to be put on the field. And, uh, and so all the related uh, documentation for the pre engineering so, such as below material, Gerber files, and code. Um, we're going to propose two technology using the, the, this technique. So that is the radio emission spectroscopy. The first uh, is uh, uh, regarding the usage of the near and far field sensor. So essentially, uh, they are uh, customized E field and B field sensors that are that is electrical and magnetic fields around narrow band and wide band sensors around the frequency, uh, I said before, so in between uh, one kilohertz up to two gigahertz. And uh, ideally, the, the main goal is to put um, the sensor in connection with the delicate electronic circuitry. So just to give you an example, the Raspberry Pi, for example, or Arduino at first instance, but uh, to be put in conjunction with the sensor and uh, on board of the drones. And uh, because the potential application is to check remotely, so remote health and status check analysis of the wind turbine from drones. And uh, because of that, we can see the benefits, uh, the reliability of the measurements, uh, no human resources needed in loco, because just for instance, just imagine that every time there is a fault condition in a wind farm, because of the height here to, uh, to, to, to use human resources, and then because of that, the reliability of measurement, uh, time and money saving. The second technology we are going to propose is also based on the radio emission spectroscopy 
and is about the usage of so-called smart grid intelligent sensors. Uh, also in this case, they, use, they are using the radio frequency intelligent sensor to be used inside the wind turbines, uh, nacelle, so what is inside the AC, DC, DC, AC uh, electronics and control electronics inside the wind turbines, and uh, all of them will be uh, connected through a dock wireless network in order to create, for example, uh, mesh networks to communicate up externally with the drones, because the, the goal is to communicate dynamically with drones to share le relevant data remotely, of course. And uh, also in this case, the potential application are uh, remote health and status check analysis of the wind turbines using a dedicated gateway on board of a drone, because this way will, uh, let's consider using a drone uh, as a gateway, you will collect all the data from one drone or multiple drones uh, at once. So uh, be because of that, uh, the benefits are the real time monitoring on entire site at once. Uh, so uh, you can monitor at once using a fleet of drones, for example, and sharing data using collecting all the data using one drone as a gateway all the all the data for example if you want to check the delamination of the blinds or uh, of the of the blade of the turbines and uh, the electronic fault for example the power electronic for igbt final stage uh, and the remote access to data through a secure internet because of the gateway the gateway using different multiple radio frequency connection through uh, a secure internet that, for example ipv6 um yeah that's it so if you're interested uh to know more details about uh, our technology yes so please contact us or... okay thank you thank you very thank much you. for your presentation thank you very much alberto and now our last presentation finally in french uh, and this is uh, uh, the presentation of Estia, and, uh, and Pachi Bernard is going to present the, the technologies, okay? Pachi, are you ready? Yeah, uh, oui, c'est bon, Thank je suis prêt. Thank you so much. Uh, vous voyez mon écran? <laughs> De rien, Sylvia. Uh, vous voyez mon écran? Uh, do you see my screen, Sylvia? Oui, oui, oui. Okay, super. Euh, donc euh, bonjour tout le monde, euh, donc, je vais commencer par euh, introduire un petit peu euh, l'ESTIA, euh, donc l'école euh, d'ingénieurs euh, installée à Bidar dans laquelle, euh, dans laquelle je travaille. Euh, voilà, mais l'ESTIA euh, avant, avant toute chose c'est une école d'ingénieurs. On a euh, deux autres euh, grosses activités euh, qui sont ESTIA Entreprendre et ESTIA Recherche où euh, la division d'ESTIA Entreprendre euh, accompagne euh, en incubateur des entreprises pour, euh, pour euh, voilà, les, les aider à se lancer. Et on a, une, donc, comme, comme de nombreuses écoles d'ingé, une, une grosse activité de recherche. Je vais développer un petit peu plus ce, ce, cette activité. Euh, donc euh, l'ESTIA, c'est avant tout euh, cinq plateformes techniques. Je vais faire, euh, je vais faire un focus sur, sur deux d'entre elles. Euh, donc la première, c'est la PEPS, euh, plateforme d'évaluation de prototypage et de test d'usage. Donc en fait, c'est la plateforme dans laquelle euh, j'évolue. Donc euh, je, vais, euh, je vais prendre une seconde pour, pour dire un mot euh, sur moi. Donc euh, je m'appelle Pachi Berard, euh, je suis un ingénieur d'études euh, qui travaille depuis plus de dix ans euh, maintenant dans, dans le Human Factor, euh, essentiellement avec le, le, le département Human Factor euh, d'Airbus. Et euh, on travaille beaucoup euh, ben, dans tous leurs projets de, de recherche dans le, dans le domaine de l'aéronautique. On s'intéresse particulièrement en fait, au, au domaine de l'interaction multimodale. Et on les, on les accompagne pour, pour développer euh, des, des systèmes interactifs complexes selon la, la philosophie du, du Human Centered Design. Pour la prochaine génération de cockpit, donc euh, plutôt 2040-2060, on est spécialisé dans le développement de, de, de systèmes interactifs complexes, donc, euh, donc euh, à, à forte composante ergonomique, et, euh, et particulièrement dans, dans toutes les nouvelles technologies euh, qui ont qu on émergé ces dix dernières années euh, au 
autour de, de, de la réalité virtuelle est augmenté. La deuxième plateforme dont je voudrais vous parler, c'est Compositador. C'est euh, la plateforme dans laquelle évolue mon, mon collègue Guillaume Bayou, qui va vous présenter, euh, à, après ma présentation, il va vous présenter le, la technologie du Waterjet. Et dans cette plateforme, ils sont plutôt spécialisés dans, dans tout ce qui est euh, procédé euh, robotisé pour le, le, la dépose de, de, de matériaux composites. Euh, donc j'ai déjà, euh, je vous ai déjà introduit les, donc les deux les, 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 les deux plateformes PEPS et Compositador. On a aussi une, une plateforme Adimadour euh, qui est plutôt spécialisée euh, sur tout ce qui est euh, les, les solutions autour de, de, de la fabrication additive. On a une, une plateforme aussi de, de simulation numérique pour, euh, pour la résistance des matériaux. Et on a une qui s'appelle Simecomp. On a une plateforme euh, Energia qui, elle, est spécialisée euh, dans tout ce qui est euh, énergie, euh, énergie renouvelable et surtout les smart grids. Euh, donc, euh, la première euh, technologie qu'on va développer dans le cadre du projet, comparée aux autres partenaires, nous, on est vraiment un TRL assez bas parce que c'est une technologie qu'on développe dans le cadre du projet. La vidéo que vous pouvez voir qui tourne, c'est l'état le, le, du développement à l'heure actuelle. Et euh, donc, euh, on va chercher à développer un virtual cockpit. Pourquoi Parce que euh, très souvent, il est assez difficile de développer de la navigation automatique pour les véhicules. Et dans plusieurs cas, il est encore nécessaire d'avoir une, une navigation manuelle. Et en ce qui concerne les drones et les robots mobiles, euh, normalement, lorsqu'on fait de la commande manuelle, on est in situ, on est sur le site et on a un opérateur qui tient une, une télécommande dans laquelle, euh, en général, il obtient simplement un retour vidéo euh, d'une caméra embarquée sur le véhicule. Et à partir de là, il fait un, un double check entre la vidéo et ce qu'il voit et il essaie de commander euh, de cette manière-là le, le véhicule. Nous, dans le projet durable, on va chercher à, à s'appuyer en fait, sur, euh, sur le 3D pour développer un environnement beaucoup plus riche de navigation. Et en fait, grâce à ce 3D et à l'immersion, on espère vraiment pouvoir mettre l'opérateur le, le, euh, en situation comme s'il commandait lui-même le, le véhicule et, euh, et donc vraiment rendre l'expérience le, déjà beaucoup plus riche pour lui et le rendre beaucoup plus efficace dans son travail, notamment en s'appuyant sur euh, les, les différentes... Euh, euh, remonter de données qu'on va avoir des différents capteurs sur les véhicules et notamment du, du LIDAR. Euh, on, va, on va développer toute une approche pour récupérer euh, tout le, tous les points qui sont scannés par le LIDAR et les afficher dans l'environnement euh, tout autour du, du pilote. On va aussi euh, euh, s'intéresser à une, une autre fonctionnalité qui est une, on va s'intéresser à une 3D map, c'est-à-dire essayer de de mettre en place toute la zone d'opération de, de, de l'opérateur ben, en 3D dans son environnement et qui puisse comme ça superviser tous les différents véhicules et drones. Parce que dans le cadre de Durable, on va, on va donc scanner des, des panneaux photovoltaïques et, et des champs éoliens avec plusieurs drones et donc de pouvoir ainsi superviser toute, toute l'opération et quand c'est nécessaire, prendre la main de tel ou tel, de tel, ou tel euh, euh, drone. Et le gros plus, de, les gros bénéfices d'avoir ce type de technologie, c'est d'avoir exactement la même, le, le, le même environnement quand on, va, quand on va faire du training euh, pour entraîner ces opérateurs qu'en que le, 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 que opération réelle. Et en plus, c'est très facile à faire évoluer. Comme c'est que du soft, euh, c'est beaucoup plus facile de, 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 de mettre en place de nouvelles fonctionnalités. Voilà, donc ça, c'est pour la première technologie. Et euh, la deuxième technologie, c'est toujours dans le, depuis ce, ce cockpit virtuel, en fait. Donc là, pour le coup, la vidéo, c'est un exemple de ce qu'on souhaitera obtenir. En fait, euh, lorsque l'opérateur le, le, va pouvoir s'approcher d'un endroit où il y aurait éventuellement de, des opérations de, de maintenance à faire, là, pareil, il n'est pas toujours facile de d'automatiser ces, euh, ces opérations à cause de la complexité du, du terrain. 
ou de l'opération en elle-même. Et donc, il est encore, euh, il est encore nécessaire d'envoyer des opérateurs in situ pour faire ces opérations-là. Et nous, on va donc explorer avec un robot biarm, euh, a priori, pour l'instant, un Yumi d'ABB. On va euh, chercher à faire euh, de, du biomimétisme, c'est-à-dire euh, vraiment euh, bouger donc à l'aide d'une combinaison de mocap, de motion capture. On va récupérer tous les mouvements de, de l'opérateur dans le, dans le cockpit virtuel. Et euh, l'idée étant qu'il puisse euh, comme ça déplacer un, un robot mobile, aller jusque par exemple au, au panneau photovoltaïque qui mériterait euh, une opération de maintenance et après euh, prendre la main euh, directement depuis le cockpit virtuel et ainsi pouvoir euh, commander les, les, les bras robots et pouvoir faire son, son opération de, de maintenance, son, donc du coup en, en remote, en, en télé-opération. Euh, l'idée étant de, de pouvoir éviter euh, ben, tous les risques pour la personne et aussi d'avoir de réduire euh, euh, largement les coûts en évitant de, de, les différents déplacements euh, euh, nécessaires pour aller, euh, pour aller sur site. Et là, pareil, on espère que, enfin, on espère, on est convaincu que, en s'appuyant sur, sur la 3D et l'immersion, on va vraiment faciliter la vie des, des, des opérateurs parce que là, de la même manière, on pourra les aider en affichant. Euh, euh, toujours pareil, grâce aux capteurs euh, embarqués sur les différents véhicules, euh, des, des informations euh, additionnelles de, de l'environnement et de l'opération, et donc de la même manière récupérer le, 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 le point cloud des lidars. Et donc euh, euh, pour l'opérateur, ce sera, ce sera une représentation, on va dire, holographique de tout son environnement, et il devrait pouvoir réussir à faire les tâches de manière, de manière efficace. Euh, maintenant, je vais laisser la parole à mon collègue Guillaume Bayou euh, qui va vous présenter euh, la technologie Waterjet. Merci, Pachi. Tu peux mettre ma slide, s'il te plaît Ouais, elle arrive. Okay. Bonjour tout le monde, euh, je m'appelle Guillaume Bayou. Je... Parfait. Okay. Je suis euh, ingénieur composite donc, sur la plateforme technique Composite Adour qui dépend de l'Estia. Euh, pour le projet durable, je vais vous présenter donc euh, un robot de Zax euh, qui s'appelle euh, Reply 5 et qui est un ro robot dédié donc à la réparation composite. Euh, il utilise donc la technologie euh, d'abrasion par jet d'eau euh, pour la réparation composite. Donc c'est comme de la découpe jet d'eau, mais c'est euh, un surpassage. Euh, donc en usine de composite, mais la réparation, c'est-à-dire la redisposition des plis de réparation et la cuisson est toujours, euh, de manière, se fait toujours de manière manuelle. Cette technologie et ce robot, elle est certifiée euh, pour euh, l'usinage euh, du fuselage et euh, des panneaux de Kilbeam pour la 350. Euh, donc comme on peut voir sur, sur la vidéo, donc, euh, il y a un impact qui est détecté par exemple sur un fuselage d'avion. Euh, les plis composites, donc c'est des plis majoritairement de carbone orientés à 0, 90, 45 et 135 degrés. Le but est d'enlever euh, le matériau impacté pli à pli, donc enlever tout le défaut. On peut usiner soit en step, donc en escalier, soit en scarf, en pente. Donc ça, ça, ça dépend euh, du, du bureau d'études qui euh, dicte la réparation. Cette machine, elle est transportable, elle pèse 50 kg et on peut venir la pluguer sur un fuselage. Euh, la surface euh, d'usinage est de 500 mm. Euh, on fait juste une connexion avec de l'air, euh, de l'eau et de l'électricité. Et ensuite, on peut euh, entrer les informations dans un IHM euh, pour ensuite venir usiner directement la zone euh, en donnant bien évidemment des paramètres d'usinabilité propres aux matériaux qu'on veut usiner. Pour voir que euh, l'usinage a bien été fait et que euh, la totalité des plis ont été enlevés, euh, on peut avoir, on a un organisme de, de, de contrôle euh, en fait, qui, use, qui utilise pardon, euh, euh, la réflexion de la fibre de carbone par rapport à la. On envoie un faisceau de lumière et donc la fibre de carbone réagit à 90 degrés de ce, de ce faisceau de lumière et donc on obtient un pourcentage de euh, plis restants. Les bénéfices de ce procédé, c'est un process qui est clean, donc il n'y aura pas de poussière dans l'air. Euh, les opérateurs donc, euh, ne peuvent pas se blesser, euh, il y a 
et en plus, euh, au niveau de leur travail, c'est euh, beaucoup plus facile euh, pour eux de venir usiner, ils sont moins fatigués, donc au niveau pénibilité, c'est très, euh, très, il y a beaucoup de bénéfices. De plus, euh, la vitesse et la précision du process euh, permet donc euh, d'obtenir euh, euh, un usinage 3 à 9 fois plus rapide que manuellement. Et aussi, euh, la préparation de surface par cette technologie euh, garantit des euh, états de surface de collage, donc pour des collages qui vont être améliorés euh, vers l'ordre de 30%, donc pour des euh, composites carbone époxy. Euh, quatre robots sont actuellement euh, en utilisation dans le monde. Euh, donc, il y en a un qui a été vendu pour Airbus, un autre à Singapour Airlines, un autre à Delta et un que nous utilisons donc en recherche à, à l'Estia. Euh, les applications potentielles, donc les autres, elles vont être au niveau aéronautique mais au niveau militaire cette fois, sur le, on est en train de travailler. Euh, sur l'enlèvement de pli euh, de la perforation acoustique, mais aussi donc d'autres secteurs avec le projet durable, donc euh, l'éolien. Et là, ce qui va nous intéresser, donc c'est bien sûr de venir euh, usiner euh, les pales éoliennes qui sont en composite, donc des composites différents que ceux utilisés en aéro aéronautique. Donc là, ça va être euh, le cœur de notre développement euh, pour ce projet. Voilà. Merci, Spachi, tu veux prendre pour la dernière slide Merci. Merci. Jean, have you finished? Oui, bonjour. Oui, pardon. Juste pour dire, donc, euh, vous, vous pouvez nous contacter, bien sûr, euh, pour faire des B2B, euh, soit par email, soit euh, au mieux par le, le site web euh, donc, de la robotique. Euh, par contre, pour les questions, euh, pour plutôt les questions donc, orientées technologie pour le Water Dead, donc vous avez compris euh, plutôt Guillaume Bayou, euh, pour les deux technologies présentées au début, euh, donc le cockpit virtuel et la, la commande de, 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 de robots biarm par biomimétique plutôt moi et pour tout ce qui serait euh, potentiel euh, projet ou collaboration possible entre notre entité et la vôtre s'il vous plaît plutôt Olivier Lard euh, qui est notre responsable pour toutes les, euh, les, les actions de ce type là voilà merci beaucoup pour votre attention and now we are going to uh, merci beaucoup Fatim and now we are going to, to finalize the, the, this webinar we have to 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 glad all the all the partners involved in the in the project uh, also the enterprise european network that has supported us in this action and in special to the uh, andalusian innovation agency that has been supporting us since all in all the preparation of the event okay and uh, now we are i am going to to finalize only uh, with only one with one sharing my screen. Okay, I don't know if you can see my screen. Okay, can you see my screen right now? Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. You see the the website or or not? Yeah. Okay. Okay, I'm going to show you. Uh, it's only a very easy thing. Okay, it's only to explain you how is the procedure for re for requesting and accepting each meetings. Okay, uh, if if you are interested in, in any of the other uh, of the of the technology that has been presented today, uh, uh, you have to go to the technology with the, to the website. You can go to the technology to be presented, and of course you have direct access to all the technologies by, by clicking on requested meeting, okay? Uh, with this, you will be redirected to that person and they will be able to request. But you need to be logging to be to request your, your presentations. As soon as you will be logging, uh, you will be able to request the presentation to all the participants, okay, that were available, okay? If you want, for example, one meeting with this, with Emery, you only have to meet here, okay? And uh, it's quite easy. You will see all your meetings uh, scheduled here, and there will be a, and a, a link will be appear at the time that you will uh, you will fix your meeting meetings, and um, you will be able to do it directly by 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 the clicking on the link. It's quite easy. So please, we kindly uh, uh, remind you that we need your feedback in this project. We need to know which are the, 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 the needs of the operation and maintenance companies to be able to develop the technology, to improve the development of the technologies that we have in, the, in, this, in this project and to approach them to your market.
Okay, so thank you so much, all, all of you, for your participation, and uh, we will wait you in, a, in the near future. Thank you so much. Thank you, Silvia. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you, Silvia. Bye. Bye. See you. Thank you. Bye. Thank Bye. -bye. You. Bye. We will wait you at, at the B2B meetings. Okay.